Hey guys, Nate, the Auto Outdoorsman here. Today I'm just filming a video real quick for you and sitting in my car because it's in the way of where I do my videos and I don't feel like moving it. Um, but I was just watching Larry Roberts' video um, on how, like, he was making uh, sunglasses for himself and he's talking, and in the video he was talking about his method of how he tries things out, how he kind of comes up with a question, researches the topic a little bit, and then comes up with a theory and tries it in his, uh, like he said, his garage. Now, he did that because he wanted to see what works in a controlled setting. Now, that brings up something that I want to talk about, especially for a couple more of the videos I'm going to be doing, and a couple of the videos I've done with uh, experimenting. Um, basically his method of doing that is the scientific method. Now that's generally how I approach questions and actually a lot of people in our community approach it that way without even realizing it. <clears throat> so generally what it is is you come up with a question, you research the question, you form a hypothesis, you then form the experiment, you do the experiment, you look at the results, and you kind of come up with a conclusion. Now that's a very simplified uh, description of the scientific method, but it, for all intents and purposes, worked for what we were doing. So I'm going to use one of my previous videos as an example. When I did the flint and steel trying to set off uh, the alcohol. Now. I came up with a question uh, before I even started the video. Can I set off isopropyl alcohol, or IPA as I'll normally call it, with a flint and steel, or even a ferro rod? I researched it and I thought, okay, isopropyl alcohol has a high vapor rate. It will ignite the fumes, hopefully, and set off the tinder I had next to it. So then I created the experiment where I decided I would just lay down the alcohol on the surface to create as much surface area as possible to increase the vapor and I put the tinder off to the side and I just wanted to test the alcohol purely itself. Then I did the experiment. You saw in the video, I'll link it down below. Um, and I tried to get it going with ferro rod, I tried to get it going with the flint and steel and no go. Then I looked, so I then looked at the results. It couldn't get it going. But I was then going to troubleshoot it, creating another hypothesis, saying I had another question then, does the isopropyl actually go up? I had a high concentration. So then I actually got the fire going, mostly for my own satisfaction, and then I squirted it into the fire. Yes, the isopropyl still burns. I'm still kind of working on that. Now the conclusion. Can I get, in this case it was 90% IPA to go up with ferro rod or flint and steel, and the conclusion was not in the current state or no. Then what something that's very important in science is you consult other people. Even in when you're researching a topic, the best thing to do is consult experts or people, other people when you're designing an experiment. And the... So with that, I put that video up on my channel. And I got feedback. Um, I did get some people that were say in areas that shared it were like, well, you could just use this, but it's like you could just use a cotton swab, or you could just use a cotton swab with petroleum jelly, but that wasn't the point of the video, that was the, uh, those are proven methods. I like trying them with non-proven methods. Doing an experiment, seeing if it works. Because if we don't experiment, we don't grow. That's the wonderful thing about science. So, understanding the scientific method, and I'll even post the steps down below, um, is a very important 
technique into answering any form of question. Um, I hope this all makes sense. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to post them. Having you guys understand this mindset that I'm in is very important for a few more videos I'm going to be posting up soon. I'm currently working on an experiment that I would like to execute, but it's not done yet for me to release like I'd like to um, because I'm working out the experimental design to the best of my ability so that it's concise and can be followed really easily. One of the other important parts of the scientific method is, can it be reproduced? That is generally the last step in the peer review cycle. Can the, pro can the project be reproduced? Can the results be reproduced? Say I got the isopropyl going, and some weird fluke happened, okay, it went up, but I can never do it again, ever, then it's possible my conclusion is wrong. Now in this being wrong or right doesn't matter, uh, you can be, if you're correct, yay! You literally just, you proved your hypothesis, or you supported your hypothesis. We rarely use prove in science, um, but we try not to because you never truly prove anything, um, unless it's experimented over and over and over and over and over. But then that's a scientific theory, it's when it's been constantly retested and retested and retested, which is different than a regular theory. Um, but if you're wrong, cool. Failure in science is one of the best things out there because you learn from it just as much as you learn from succeeding. And I can tell you some of my experiments, some of my hypotheses I've created and experiments I've done were wrong. And we got cool results from being wrong. And sometimes with science, are things practical? No. A lot of times, yes, but sometimes no. But sometimes we do these experiments because, well, we find them cool. And you know what? Doing things like that is what gets me up in the morning. So, again, I hope this all makes sense, and feel free to ask any questions. Um, I'll try and answer them to the best of to my ability. My name is Nate, and I'm the Odd Art Outdoorsman. Saying thank you, and think using the scientific method. Have a good day.